It feels like forever ago that we got the Asus Strix Vega card, but we've been unable to review it until a time at which Asus and AMD come to a conclusion of vBIOS functioning properly with drivers. We then got the Power Color card in, the Red Devil, and had some similar issues with it prior to the most recent driver update, 11.4. And what we're doing today is looking at these three cards to see if it's finally time to review them. Because it's getting pretty close to consumer availability, and that means that there need to be reviews online. So all we're doing today is checking the frequency response using different driver revisions on these three different cards and different vBIOS revisions in some cases to determine if AMD and their board partners have resolved the issues of drivers and the clocks not quite working properly. Before getting to that, this content is brought to you by the Thermaltake Flow RGB closed loop liquid cooler, which is a 360 millimeter radiator plus 3120 fans that are RGB illuminated. The Thermaltake rain fans at that. This is a 4.5 gen Azatec pump, which is one of the faster pumps. You can learn more at the link in the description below. So let's establish the basics here. It's been pretty exhausting going back and forth with all the board partners and AMD trying to figure out when can we review these cards? We've been waiting. Because here's the thing, when we get the product in, we've got a few options. And one is if we're embargoed, obviously there's, that's it, end of story. If we're not embargoed, it becomes a question of when does it make sense to review it for the consumer? If I reviewed this thing like almost two months ago and we got it, it would be completely irrelevant information by the time it ships. Because it hasn't shipped yet, but it will soon, should by end of year. And obviously that information would be so old that it's completely irrelevant. So we wait and obviously that gives the vendors time to fix problems or to improve performance if there are no problems to fix. So that's what we've done. Now, because it's getting time for these to launch, it's probably time to review them so people actually know what they're getting. So we're looking back at this one again and we're looking at the Red Devil versus retesting the Vega 64 reference card. The big things here to look at are the frequencies. So the frequency reporting in driver version 17.11.3 was broken to a point of, uh, actually not just reporting, but AMD even lists this as a problem, as a known issue on their website. So it's a real issue and uh, it's known by AMD. So they fixed some of that in 17.11.4, but not all of it. The rest will be fixed in Adrenaline or whatever the next major driver update is. We've heard rumors of December from people who aren't at AMD, so secondhand information, but that'll fix most of it. Can't wait forever though. The cards are shipping soon. So 17.10.1, going backwards in time, sometimes fixed problems with the clock reporting, but then you lose the game optimizations and potentially other optimizations in the drivers that you have with 17.11.x. So that was the conundrum. Uh, now we're testing for frequency. So let's, let's just establish the frequency first and see if any of them actually clock properly. The Red Devil and the Asus card should theoretically clock a bit higher than the reference card, depending on which vBIOS is used. So we'll look at that first with just Firestrike for now. This is a frequency chart of the reference RX Vega 64 card from AMD using driver version 17.11.4 and the first BIOS switch position with stock settings. The spikes will be uniform across all devices because the test is recorded from an automated suite of all 3D Mark Firestrike and times by benchmarks that we scripted. Here's the Asus Strix card with the latest vBIOS revision from a few weeks ago. The card is reporting frequencies just below the reference card about 20 megahertz deficit on average, but the question remains whether that's a reporting bug or even accurate reporting or if it's actually performance. So we'll have to look at performance for that, which we'll do momentarily, and calls back to our initial Vega review where people thought they were overclocking, for example, to 1900 megahertz, which wasn't happening, but the frequency would report that way. So there is a clear history of incorrect frequency reporting on AMD drivers right now, which means that we don't actually know if it's really slower or if it's just reporting incorrectly. We'll have to test it next. This next line is for the Power Color Red Devil card when using a pre-production vBIOS switch set number three, so the far right switch position. And this is just to see if it behaves differently from production. The frequency jumps up to about 80 to 100 megahertz higher than reference at times and is consistent in its additional performance. That's more from removing the power limitation than actual pre-overclocks. 
This next line is the middle switch for the power color card, which they define as a balanced mode. The clocks are reporting a bit higher frequency than reference at times, but are mostly tied. We tend to be equal or about 10 megahertz higher. Finally, here's the silent mode for the power color line. This one is nearly the same as balanced mode, though maybe one to five megahertz lower. The differences in clock here are within variance and error at this point, as the power color spec actually defines the clock as the same for all three BIOS revisions. If you're asking then why the higher power target one is clocking higher, it's simply because it has a higher power budget, not because they've actually pre-overclocked it higher, but that's just how the boost mode works. The same frequency target is applied to balance, silence, and OC, and that's 1630 MHz core with 945 MHz HBM2. The only real differences are the fan targets and the power budget. This table shows all of the power color switch differences, highlighting a 40 watt increase to TGP with OC mode and varying temperature targets that dictate the fan curve. And here's how that relates to scoring in game. This is Sniper Elite 4 with DirectX 12 and Async Compute, 4K resolution and high settings. This game is one of the most sensitive to any changes on AMD hardware, so should show the differences if they exist. The reference Vega 64 card with 17.11.4 is operating at nearly 60 FPS average, with the lows consistently at about 53 and 51. With older drivers, 17.8.1, the Vega 64 card got about 58 FPS average, so we've seen some uplift on 17.11.4 in general, for the ASUS card, the company briefly recommended testing on 17.10.1. This is prior to the launch of 11.4, so we did that. On 17.10.1, we were seeing measurably better performance than on 17.11.3, and this was consistent in pretty much all games that we tested. The performance is roughly equal to 17.11.4, so whatever was broken in .3 seems to have been resolved, and .3 did have more known clock reporting bugs, so that's part of that, though 17.11.4 has some of its own problems still, they're just not as severe. This would explain part of the performance disparity. Regardless of the minor differences here, the ASUS card is not able to exit margin of error for differences between reference, and we typically do see differences for AIB partner cards that are greater than the tolerance for error. The power color card, for instance, plots 61 to 64 FPS here, depending on which VBIOS we're using. And for the Red Devil, we are seeing an actual difference with the higher TGP on switch number three. We're measuring a gain of about 6.9% on the Red Devil over the reference 64 on 17.11.4. Using switch number two, balanced mode, we're at 3.2%, so it's outside of error, but not by much. Well, enough, but it's definitely working. That's the point, and that's a start. The Strix card seems somewhat stuck, but we can't confidently state why that is. If it's expected, or if it's an AMD ASUS sign-off issue of some kind, that remains to be seen. So to recap, in some of the tests, depending on what they were, the ASUS card was originally doing better on 17.10.1 than .11.3. The version in .11.4 fixed some of these problems, and the major difference here is that power color is actually plotting more change. So we're seeing up to 7% performance uplift with the higher TGB switch. That's actually more wattage, 40 more watts available to the GPU, which is why you see that change. And then other than this, it seems like Power Colors is pretty much working on 17.11.4. There were more issues on dot three than now. So I think we're ready to test this card and review it properly. You can look for that soon. The ASUS card still has an issue. So at this point, we're waiting for ASUS to ship the card, make it available for pre-order or something like that, at which point consumers can get it, so we're going to review it. Or for ASUS to hopefully before launch say, uh, we figured out the problem, it was this handshake with our card and AMD's drivers or whatever, we fixed it, here's a better version. Um, so yeah, that's what we're kind of waiting on right now. Let's look at Firestrike scores briefly to just kind of reinforce what we've seen thus far. Firestrike's next. For Firestrike Ultra, the power color Vega 64 with the OC switch is hitting 5621 points, averaged over multiple passes. The Strix falls down to below reference levels of performance when using driver versions 17.11.4 and .3 especially, and this is repeatable over multiple passes. The maximum performance delta between the lowest score and the highest scoring single card is 6.5%. That's not huge, 
and we're talking single digit FPS changes, but the drivers are clearly interacting with the Strix card in very specific and potentially incorrect ways. With Firestrike Extreme, the Power Color card lands at top again, with the OC switch at 11,022 points, clearly demonstrating that the overpower headroom is outputting higher clocks, so things are working properly, and the clocks are reporting at least relative to each other properly. We don't know if they're 100% accurate and can't really be sure, but based on performance, we can see that they are at least somewhat relative to each other accurate. So that's our 80 to 100 megahertz increase from earlier. The maximum performance change is still about 5.2% increase for the best power color number versus the worst number on the chart, and the performance swing in FPS would range from 55 to 58 FPS with the Fire Strike test, just to give you a frame of reference, though we won't make a chart for that. The Strix card is, once again, performing worse than the reference card, which we think comes down to some kind of driver handshake. With Firestrike 1080p, the scaling is identical to what we saw before, showing a performance range of 4.5% from top to bottom. We'll also include time spy numbers linked in the article in the description below if you want to see those. So that's really it. This is a pretty easy video. The Power Color card is ready to review. We don't normally do a pre-review test to validate if it's time to review them, but the idea here is to set the stage so everyone's clear on how the drivers interact with the different cards, so it, it, there's a good understanding of why we're reviewing what we are, when we are. To recap, this is ready to go. We'll review it very soon. Already tested this and retested it with the newest drivers. So these will be on a level ground. Uh, we are focusing on out of box testing. We will do overclock testing, power consumption, and the usual sweet noise testing, all that stuff with the power color card. This one, we've done thermals on, but uh, the challenge is that at this point, we're just waiting to do the game testing. And we will only wait up until a point that you can buy the card or up until the point that Asus tells us it's ready and in a final state for review. Until then, there's no point in reviewing it because it won't represent the final product. And if we're just publishing it two weeks ahead of the launch of that product and it changes a day before launch, then we'd have to redo it all anyway. And it's just gonna be easier for everyone if we wait, but only so long. So that's everything. That's Vega. It's taken a long time to get to this point. AMD uh, has had supply limitations and issues. So partner cards are scarce to begin with, and then they haven't worked for like two months. But we don't know whose fault that is. We don't know if that's AMD. We don't know if that's the board partners. It could have something to do with the VBIOS signature that was introduced. It could have entirely nothing to do with that and be all about the drivers. Uh, it could be the board partners building VBIOS with lower clocks than we expect. I don't know, but hopefully it's fixed. And check back, subscribe so that you can check that content when it is up. And as always, patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one. It's probably the most direct way to help us out short of just watching and subscribing to the content. So thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.